The National Council of Provinces uh, continues to exist until uh, the immediately before the first sitting of the provincial legislatures. Unlike the National Assembly, the National Assembly has been dissolved and its term ended on the day before the first day of the polling, which would be the 7th. The National Council of Provinces continues to exist until, as I have indicated, immediately before the first sittings of the provincial legislatures. Uh, it is uh, projected that the provincial legislatures will sit on the 22nd of May and that the National Council of Provinces will sit on the 23rd of May. Uh, that is so because uh, the delegates are designated or appointed by the provincial legislatures. So the National Council of Provinces can only have its first sitting after the first sittings of the provincial legislatures. And at the first sitting of the National Council of Provinces, what we are, we are in anticipating is that uh, the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces will be elected. The, the election of the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces will be presided over by the Chief Justice. And uh, the rules that are applicable are the rules that have been determined by the, by the Chief Justice, which have been published for that purpose. After the chairperson has been elected, the, 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 the chairperson will then take the seat or take the chair and preside over the election of the deputy chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. We are also anticipating that uh, there will be election of uh, other presiding officers like the house chairpersons. The house chairpersons are other members who are elected for the purposes of assisting the presiding officers, particularly the chairperson and the deputy chairperson, to carry out their constitutional functions in terms of the rules as well as in terms of the constitution. And unlike uh, in the National Assembly, the Chief Whip of the National Council of Provinces is also elected. Uh, it's not a party political position, it's an institutional position. There's a chapter in the Constitution that deals with Parliament. It deals with the National Assembly and it deals with the National Council of Provinces. There's also provisions in the Constitution that provide for the lawmaking processes in the National Assembly as well, in the, as, well as in the National Council of Provinces. And that is also given effect too by the rules of the two houses. And perhaps let me talk uh, a bit about uh, the, the, the National Council of Provinces, the composition. The National Council of Provinces is composed of 90 delegates. 54 of these delegates are referred to as permanent delegates. These are the permanent members of the National Council of Provinces. And out of that uh, 90, the 34 other members are referred to as special delegates. These are special delegates are members of the provincial legislatures who are designated by their parties and they attend the proceedings of the National Council of Provinces as and when it is necessary to do so. The, 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 the composition is made out of, one can say that, out of the proportional representation of the parties in the provincial legislatures. So the more the parties, uh, the, the more the members the party has, the more the permanent delegates the party will have in the National Council of Provinces. Yeah, as, as, as I have indicated, the Chief Justice has, uh, has now promulgated the rules for the, for the elections. The elections of the speakers, for instance, in the, in the provincial legislatures, that would be the first item that the provincial legislatures must deal with, the election of the speakers. Then once the speakers, the speakers, the election of the speakers are presided over by the judge's president in the various divisions of, of the high court. So once the speaker has been elected, then the speaker will take the chair and uh, preside over the election of the deputy speaker and uh, probably also deal with other matters that uh, the provincial legislature may, may want to deal with on that day. Those, those are the rules from the Chief Justice, but those rules are only applicable. In the case of the National Council of Provinces, they are only applicable for the election of the chairperson to the National Council of Provinces. They are only applicable for the purposes of the process that the Chief Justice is responsible for, which is the election of the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, and in the National Assembly, of course, the election of the Speaker, and in the, in the provincial legislature just of course the election of the of the speakers but thereafter the rules of the national council of provinces would be applicable for instance for the election of uh, the the chairperson as well as uh, other uh, presiding officers and the chief of the national council of provinces uh, well uh, 
the, as I have indicated, the National Council of Provinces is there to make sure that because it is designated or their members are, its members are appointed by the provincial legislatures, it exists for the purposes of ensuring that uh, provincial interests are represented or are taken into effect, are taken into consideration at the national level of, uh, of governance. We normally say that the National Council of Provinces is at the cutting edge of cooperative government and intergovernmental relations, or it is a melting pot of cooperative government and uh, intergovernmental relations. Because if you look at its composition, you, 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 you can conceivably have all the three spheres of government all at the same time represented in the National Council of Provinces. And perhaps I should add that in addition to the 90 permanent uh, uh, delegates, uh, special and, uh, and permanent. We also have 10 representatives of organized local government. So organized local government is also represented in the National Council of Provinces, although members of uh, or the representatives of organized local government can participate in the processes and proceedings of the National Council of Provinces and its committees, but they do not have a right to vote, precisely because they belong to the municipal councils. But the citizens must watch the proceedings of the National Council of Provinces and its committees. They must also watch the proceedings of the provincial legislatures. They must watch the proceedings of uh, the National Assembly as we constitute the sixth National Council of Provinces, the sixth provincial legislatures, as well as the sixth uh, uh, National Assembly.